We celebrate how God calls all of us into relationship while honoring our race, ethnicity, gender, age, sexual orientation, gender identity and expression, income and ability, and because of that, we advocate for all of God's children. If you're watching worship from home, you need access to a bulletin or whatever you would use for food and drink that you'll receive in Holy Communion. If you're here in the sanctuary, you need a little paper bag that contains the bread and wine or bread and juice. We don't have one yet. Raise your hands so we can get you one. And go ahead and unseal that bag now so that you're ready to receive communion later in the service. Everyone is welcome to receive the sacrament today. You don't need to be a member of this or of any church. Church council meets tomorrow evening at 6. Some of our members gather for breakfast every Wednesday at 9 a.m. And all of you are welcome to join them. We still have the copper kitchen. We are still at the copper kitchen, I think, on Central Avenue at 56th Street South. Our online Bible study meets on Thursdays at 2 and 7 p.m. This week we're looking at chapter 5 of the book of Isaiah. And next Sunday, right here in this space, there will be a concert at 5 p.m. 5 p.m. featuring younger artists playing the piano, the harp, and the flute. And we have posters and flyers for that concert, so please grab some and annoy your friends and neighbors by telling them again and again and again about the awesome concert that they can hear here, here. Next Sunday at what time? Thank you. We aren't passing an offering plate. Or you can write out a check to put in an offering plate as you are leaving today. There are also envelopes there that you can use to make a cash contribution to our ministry. If you missed the blowout surprise birthday picnic for Mr. Matthew Rice yesterday, I hear that leftover cake and soda are on their way here so that we can just continue celebrating that 40th birthday for the college cakes. But this week, we are also wishing a happy anniversary to Tom and Marty Snap. <laughs> and happy birthday to Pat Capfammer, Kim Corsino, and Barb McCole. <laughs>
and as it is easy for you to do so, I invite you to stand. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Amen. Drawn into community and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sins. God, our provider, it is hard to believe your promises of life. We question your ways when they differ from those of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. Call us back to your love. Share with us the words of eternal life and lead us for life in the world. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the bread from heaven, you are fed and nourished. With Jesus, the giver of life, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are forgiven and loved and shown God's abundant mercy. Thanks be to God. Help, 
Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Please be seated. If today's scriptures have a common theme, it is that of making a lasting commitment to God and to the ways of God. At the end of the book of Joshua, the Israelites are asked to choose which God they will serve, whether it will be one of the gods worshipped by their ancestors or the God who saved them from slavery and has protected and provided for them on their journey to a new home. Psalm 34 says that God is worthy of our commitment because God comforts the brokenhearted and saves the righteous from their many troubles. The letter to the Ephesians says that we need to make a commitment to God so that we can be protected in the cosmic battle between good and evil. In the Gospel of John, Jesus uses the shocking metaphors of eating the flesh of the Son of Man and drinking his blood to describe the level of commitment that we need to make if we are to enjoy an abundant and meaningful life that has no end. Let us pray. Holy God, your word feeds your people with life that is eternal. Direct our choices and preserve us in your truth that renouncing what is false and evil, we may live in you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Joshua. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem, and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Now therefore revere the Lord, and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. Now if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods, For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along the way that we went, and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. Word of God, word of life. Thank you. Thanks to God. God. <laughs>
second reading is from the letter to the Ephesians. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against the enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day, and having done everything to stand firm. Stand, therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist, and put on the blessed breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly, as I must speak. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what is It is the spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe 
and who was the one that would betray him? And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Please be seated. At the very beginning of the Gospel of John, we read, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. Near the end of the Gospel of John, we read, Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written, so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. God became a human being, so that human beings could become the children of God. We become the children of God when we entrust ourselves to the love of God. When we entrust ourselves to the love of God, we enjoy the abundant life that God desires for us. This is the basic message of the Gospel of John, and it is summed up in the Gospel's use of the word abide, which means to dwell, to rest, to remain in one place or one situation. We abide in Jesus. Jesus abides in us. Jesus abides in his Heavenly Father, and his Father abides in him, and Jesus invites us to join their relationship of abiding. In chapter 15 of John's Gospel, Jesus says to us, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. He then offers a prayer on our behalf that says, Holy Father, protect them in your name so that they may be one as we are one, as you, Father, are in me, and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one as we are one. I in them, and you in me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me, and have loved them, 
even as you have loved me. All of these ideas from other parts of the Gospel of John are brought together in chapter 6 when Jesus says, Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them, and the one who eats this bread will live forever. These shocking words are an urgent call for us to embrace the life that God is offering by uniting our very selves to God, so that by believing, we can have life. To believe in Jesus means to stop believing that we're supposed to take care of ourselves, or pull ourselves up by our own bootstraps. To believe in Jesus means to stop believing in our personal wealth, and our personal influence, and our noble thoughts and ideas. To stop believing in our fears, and our hatred, and our shame. To believe in Jesus means to stop believing in our guns and our bombs. To stop believing that politicians can save us from anything that threatens us. To stop believing advertisers who say that we will be deserving of love and respect when we buy the right products. Martin Luther teaches that our God is that person, that thing, that concept in which we place our trust. We are invited to choose this day which God we will serve. Jesus says, do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life. The bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives light to the world. I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of my Father. This is indeed the will of my Father, that all who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life. Jesus invites us to believe in and entrust ourselves to the love of God. And yes, that is a difficult teaching that not many people can accept. It causes the crowds of hungry people to start wandering away, and some of the disciples to stop following their chosen teacher. Even among the twelve who are so willing to make the commitment, there is one who betrays Jesus and one who denies knowing him. Sometimes we win our battles with the cosmic forces of evil, and sometimes we don't. And like the ancient Israelites, who were so quick to pledge their loyalty to God, and then so quick to fall back into their old comfortable ways, even when we keep failing, God keeps giving us opportunities to try and to try again. When Jesus says that we cannot come to him unless the Father grants it, and that it is the Spirit that gives life, the flesh is useless, he's saying that we only make our leap of faith with God's assistance. There are some in this congregation who do not yet have the relationship with Jesus that God desires for them, but God just keeps drawing them in deeper and closer. There are days when I don't live the abundant life that God is offering, but that doesn't stop God from offering it again and again. Regardless of how our commitment wavers, God's commitment to us 
never moves. And Jesus just keeps saying, the one who eats this bread will live forever. It's a difficult teaching, but God will never stop trying to convince us to believe it. Because for those who come to know and to trust in God, the reward is a life filled with meaning and purpose that has no end. Jesus is the bread of life. Whoever comes to him will never be hungry. Whoever believes in him will never be thirsty. And the flesh.
drawing you closer and deeper into love, then I invite you to confess that faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's Holy Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended in heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Abiding in the love of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. <laughs> Instruct us in wise treatment of the world you have provided for all your creatures. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of community, bless all who seek justice between the nations and people. Give guidance to bridge builders, heal divisions, and inspire cooperation in times of crisis, <coughs> disaster, and war. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, bless all who are in any need. Accompany all who are lonely and feeling abandoned, and remind them of your abiding presence. Accompany all who are persecuted and exploited, and open us to their cries. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of comfort. Bless all who mourn the deaths of their beloved ones. We give you thanks for the saints who have gone before us. Renew our confidence in your promise of resurrection and life that is eternal. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. <coughs> The abiding peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And with all of you. So let's find safe and kind ways to share signs of that peace with one another and with all the people who are in so desperate need of peace.
that small container of bread and wine or bread and juice out of the paper bag, but keep it sealed. I'll tell you when to unseal it after we've said the Lord's Prayer together. Just, just hold it in your hands for this part of the service as you join in all of the words that are printed in bold type in the bulletin, beginning with the offering prayer. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us into the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this seal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. <coughs> The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his death, we cry out, Amen. Amen. Celebrating his resurrection, we shout, Amen. Amen. Trusting his presence in every time and place, we plead, Amen. Amen. O oh God, you are breath. O oh God, you are bread. 
the life of the Father to the Son, the life of the Spirit of our risen Savior, life in you now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one living body that abides in love, let us pray the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ has set a table with more than enough for all. Let us eat and be satisfied. So now you can peel back that cover over the bread as I tell you that it is the body of Christ given for you. And peel back the cover over the wine or the juice as I tell you that it is the blood of Christ shed for you. And may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Amen. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal with the gift of your very presence, Send us forth to be your presence in the world. In your name we pray. Amen. I invite you to stand to receive God's blessing. The blessing of God, who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us, be upon you now and forever. Amen.
together things. Well, I remind you that there's this rumor of change in the room just over there beyond those windows as we celebrate birthdays and people and life and love. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.